can you show us what e-cars are better than Tesla's? Honest, honest answer, um, they exist, but uh, electric vehicles are not the answer. A Prius, I, I love my Prius, but but they're not, it's, a, it's like a mild step in the right direction and electric vehicles are not gonna save us. Basically, almost every electri electric car is gonna be better than a Tesla simply because they are not produced to be a luxury car. But the problem is, is that, like I said, electric vehicles are not gonna save us. They're just not. Yeah, to answer the question anyway, Nissan Leaf, Chevy Bolt for entry level, Polestar 2 for a luxury, but at a much better price than a Tesla. I always recommend the Prius, but the reason I recommend the Prius is not because it's gonna save the environment. I recommend a Prius because it's a very comfortable, very affordable, very gas efficient car that most people can, aff like most people who are going to be buying a car anyway, can can actually afford a Prius. They're they're durable, they last, and Toyota is a pretty good company. That's why I usually recommend the Prius. I own a Prius. Um, I quite like it, but yeah. A cargo bike and a membership for zip cars and stuff. Uh, zip cars are really, really, really expensive, but yeah, if you need them, you need them. Um, I would prefer to not have a car, but I will be completely honest. Uh, my entire life, I have lived in areas of the United States where a car is absolutely necessary until very recently. And we drive less now than we ever have um, because we only drive very locally on our electric car. When I was younger, I, grew, I lived in a super rural area. If you didn't have a car, you couldn't do anything at all. You can't, like, it's, it's like a long bike ride to get to the nearest store, let alone to lug your stuff, and there's no buses in rural America. Where I grew up, there was no, there was no alternative except for having a car. Every family needed to have a car, and if you didn't, you were, you were ruined. People would go into deep debt just to have a beater that they could drive around because you can't get anywhere without it. And that's a lot of America, by the way. Guys, have you guys seen, like... Hold on, let's just take a look. Like, just look at this real quick. Hold on, I just want to show you guys, just for, just for you know, uh, visualization, okay? Look at this, okay? So here's population de density in America, okay? This is like, I don't know, this is just a general ballpark. I'm not, like, I'm not trying to give you the perfect data... data data you know perfect but this is a generalized population density for america do you guys see these areas are not uninhabited they are inhabited they're just very sparsely inhabited if you live in any of these green or yellow areas in america you have to have a car if you don't have a car your life is you are like severely disadvantaged and i mean that you are severely disadvantaged. If you live in a yellow or green area, which is most of the country. Now, if you live in one of these, these red areas, you might need a car. I, and I mean that. Like, lots of people in these red areas, like if you live in New York City, you probably don't need a car. Very few people in New York City personally need a car. But many people still need a car, even if you live in the red zones. It's very stupid. We do things in a very stupid way. And by the way, just so you know, um, yeah, Austin's red, but it's hell without a car. Exactly, yes. I've literally, by the way, Merrick, it's not just you who said that. I've known multiple, I've had multiple friends who live in Austin who specifically talked about how terrible it is to have, to not have a car in Austin. It also has changed the way that we live our lives. We have been we have been molded by car culture to live a certain way, and um, and what I mean by that is that like, uh, cars have been taken for granted, even though everyone, every real person, uh, every the the vast majority of people struggle to pay for and maintain and store and upkeep a car, even. Even people who are making money enough to buy a car, it's a huge expense for them. But 
cars are taken for granted such that we no longer have anything local. So if we were to stop, or rather what I should say is it makes it painful for changes to actually happen, very painful. We don't have local production, we don't have local, um, we don't have local uh, uh, logistics. Everything is car-based. So if you try to make a change, if you try to change that, it's, it's extremely difficult because then you have to start rebuilding from square one. You have to go, well, wait a second. All of our food production, all of our food comes from ports that are far away from where everyone lives. All of our food comes from states that are far away from where everyone lives. And we've, we've, we've built all of our logistics with the assumption that everyone's gonna have cars. It's so bad. And the result is that we live in a demented society, a society that is agonizing. All of this came off of Elon Musk, but keep in mind that uh, Elon Musk is a big part of this. Elon Musk is the electric car guy. He claims to be the guy who's gonna save the world with his luxury, gigantic carbon footprint, anti-union cars, but he's not. Who were the roads really built for? Car companies. Literally, car companies. Car companies got an early foothold for having an exciting new invention, a replacement for horses. And then they said, oh my God, wait a minute. There's a mutually beneficial agreement here between the oil industry and the car industry. The oil industry was already huge. Cars were like, wow, what if we work together? What if we sell cars so hard? Everybody wants, oh, wouldn't it be great to not have to walk outside? Wouldn't it be great to zoom along the road? Wouldn't it be great if you could ship your stuff from, your, from a truck? And so then it just builds on and on and on. And you and everybody else in the world has basically no say in it. Because if a oil company or a car company or a car company and an oil company can uh, can lobby the local government to say, hey, you should put in a highway here because look at all these cars that would love to do it. Look at how many people would come visit your area in their cars. Well, what are you gonna say about that? They need the money. They think that, oh, hey, the, the, the car companies are gonna bring money to my languishing town. Didn't car companies literally run doomsday stories that cities would be knee deep in horse shit if they didn't switch? Worse than that, car companies pushed for the legal for the illegalization of things like jaywalking. Car companies were the companies that pushed the idea that pedestrians were stupid assholes who should be run over, as opposed to people living their lives the way humans always have that are endangered by these machines that have been put all over the place. Car, yeah, car companies bought up streetcars. Car companies took a small monetary advantage and they Elon Musk the shit out of everything. They used their money to force their way of living on everyone else for their own profit, and now we're stuck in it. And guys, that's not even to begin to talk about, that's not even to begin to talk about uh, all of the other bullshit that goes on in the car industry. Things like how we deal with rubber waste from tires, things like how we deal with excess uh, uh, oil drain off, how we deal with the metal and the plastic that is put into cars. Horses are expensive to have as well. Yes, horses are expensive to have as well. No one is saying that everybody should have horses instead of having cars. What people are saying is that, hey, humans walk. Humans ha need things near them. We can't, if we want to live this highly distributed life, then it, it, it mandates certain decisions. It mandates certain things. And have you ever perhaps considered that uh, maybe the trade-off isn't worth it? Maybe the trade-off of having everything be distributed out into the world, into uh, into just abstracted, ah, well, all of the food comes from, from the port that then gets trucked into the 20 supermarkets in my town, with my town, which is now a crisscross of roads. Maybe that's not worth it. Maybe it was, maybe it's bad, actually. Do you think horse riding is unethical? No, I don't. Not in and of itself. 
We had a cartoonishly huge burning tire pile about 500 meters away from our block like 12 years ago. Yeah, it's horrifying. Did you know that there are tire fires that have burned for years because the tires got stacked so high and then the, pre the, the heat and pressure ignites the tires underneath and then there's boiling bubbles of burning tires trapped underneath other tires? Did you know that that's, that's actually something that happens? And then there will be boiling, toxic, uh, bubbling messes that, that cough poison into the air and there's nothing you can do about it because nobody knows how to put them out. We have bad life expectancy. I wonder why. Have you guys considered that maybe it's because none of us actually are able to deal with the fact that there's constantly car noise around 99% of us. If you live in one of those yellow or red places, every hour of every day, you can hear cars at all times. And most humans throughout all of history have never had to live that type of life. This is something that I notice a lot because I grew up in the middle of the, in the middle of the fucking country. I grew up rural as fuck. You don't get like living near a city you can't get quiet. There is always a background noise of tire noise and engine noise. It le it puts you in a elevated stress stressed state. Elac says lots of people discard their tires in the national forest because it costs money to dispose of them. It was a huge problem at the Colville National Forest. Huge bullshit. Thick boy says, I don't remember where I learned this, but if you donate blood, it helps reduce the microplastics in your bloodstream. But it increases the microplastics in someone else's bloodstream. Bring back leeches! Bring back leeches! Bring back leeches! <laughs>